Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see in this game, I'm playing the Tier 9 Royal Navy Heavy Cruiser Drake. Matchmaking is, well, pretty decent. It's a mixed tier match. Got some 10s, some 9s, and even a few 8s. Map is Tears of the Desert. This is a standard battle, so there are no caps to contest. If someone loses a cap, they lose the game. Now, this generally changes the play style a little bit. Destroyers, for example, don't have to push up in the, in the very beginning. They play a little bit more cautiously. Let me go in here real quick and address these things, which were bugged with the 0.10.5 update, so they will not stay set for replays. But i really like for you guys to have the information that I have when I'm playing the game. And if you're not making use of Mod Station, uh, please allow me to recommend that you do so. There are some really great mods, including the green and red rectangles that you see all the names of the ships and as the game progresses and ships start to take damage you will see those uh, the color begin to recede and it gives you some idea of who has how much in terms of their original hp it'll make sense as the game progresses and if you've been watching my videos for a while you already know that also the mini map uh, the mini map mod that i use allows you to change the colors and you make it dots or dashes or solid. Uh, for myself, just to make it visually as easy as possible, the red are my weapon systems, primary and secondary. Primary, of course, is the solid red line at 14 and a half kilometers, and the secondaries are the uh, dashes at a much shorter radius around the ship. The solid blue line is the range of the torpedoes etc etc so um i i really encourage anybody who's not using mod station to do so there's another mod that you'll see here in a minute that once i've targeted someone gives their relative angle to me and my relative angle to them which really helps me to angle effectively against my target and know when to pull the trigger on my own shots based on the angle they are to me now you'll see in the the red rectangle on the right hand side you'll see two Kind of little light bulbs well those are ships that are detected you can see now three and it's and that there will be more and more as more of the red ships become visible um, it's telling me ships that i can't see yet but that are detected and you can see on the we'll call it the greenish rectangle that amagi's taking a little bit of damage and so is wooster and now fletcher now, as for the Drake, this is uh, one of the first games that I've played in this ship. I just finished up my grind in the Albemarle and put out a video about that, which you may have seen. If you haven't, I recommend doing so. If you haven't made it through that ship line yet, it gives you a little bit of information about that ship. Uh, I right then was kicking myself if I had been paying even just one second more attention. I would have seen that Jetland was out there and switched to him as a target. As it is, I missed an opportunity to put guns on him when he was running broadside. And now I'm just trying to get to the island before somebody blaps me. Now, some basics about the Drake. Well, I haven't upgraded anything. So I've still got the base hull, the base gun range, which is obviously pretty pathetic. Uh, <laughs> max gun range of... Uh, Well, I'll go all the, all the particulars of the ship. The, the max range with the non-upgraded guns is uh, it's not very good. And, you know, at 14.45 kilometers. So the basics of the ship, the, the base model version of the ship. Uh, hit points, 40,100, as you can see there on the screen. The guns are 234s. They hit a little bit harder than the guns on the Albemarle, which are... 203s 18 second reload time 180 degree turret turn takes 18 seconds so 10 degrees per second firing range we touched on at 14.45 kilometers max dispersion 142 meters at maximum range he shells do a maximum damage of 3850 with a 24% chance of a fire the AP shells do a maximum damage of 5,750. I have yet to really give the AP shells a workout. With the Albemarle, 
the number of times you get an opportunity to use those to effect is pretty limited. The replay that I did about it, uh, there was a Neptune that I got a chance to hit with some AP and was able to get some Citadel shots. But in general, the 203s uh, on the Albemarle, uh, you want to stick with the HE pretty much all the time. These, I'm not really sure yet, so I'll have to report back later about that. But I would say, in general, you're probably best off sticking with the HE the majority of the time. Now, you can see I'm targeted by five ships, four, three. I'm At this point, I'm thinking, really, I just need to go dark. So I'm going to try and angle against the incoming shots and see if I can't get out of here with my skin. Now what does this tell me that I'm still targeted? It tells me there's a destroyer center, an enemy destroyer. There's a red destroyer, pretty close, and that's why I threw those torpedoes out there. Because that's the only thing that could have had me detected as something that's kind of in the center. Because on each flank I've got ships that would detect it, right? I landed two, did a little bit of damage, woke the Jutland up. He was a little bit busy running from whoever he was running to avoid. And I'm waiting here to see. He looks like, looks to me like he's slowing down to smoke. So that's why I was holding the fire there for a second. And I'm able to land a couple more. It's not great, but it could have been worse. I've done about 5,000 damage to him at this point. If I can hit him again. And he says, to heck with that, I'm going to smoke up. I do hit him again, and I get him burning. And he's still burning. So, yay me. There are secondaries on the ship. You're not going to get a chance to use them very often. They've got a base range of 6.95 kilometers. If you get close enough for that, you've probably made a terrible error and are about to be sunk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's just the sad truth. The torpedoes, well, you've got two quad... Uh, torpedoes and so you get a total of eight torpedoes that you can throw out and they hit fairly hard they do 16,767 damage per torpedo max they run at 62 knots and they've got a 10 kilometer range AA defense well uh, like most things the AA defense is pretty pathetic you can see I'm running hydro here and I yeah I would definitely not Waste any resources on trying to buff up the AA on this thing. That would be, at least in my opinion, a complete waste. Concealment. Well, if you've got the commander skill and, and take the uh, concealment module, as you can see, you can get the concealment down uh, to a pretty respectable level. Got it. And the Benson, I'm sure, is the destroyer that was in the center that was keeping me spotted at the point at which I was being targeted by five ships. Really wish I had my spotter plane up, but I don't. Unfortunately, I had AP loaded there, so nowhere near the damage I'd hoped to put on the Jutland, but that's right, switching right back to the AG. Torpedoes to starboard. I'm really looking forward to seeing what this ship is capable of once I upgrade the hull and the guts. Because I have a little bit better range. Let me pull that up here real quick. So it'll go from a, a range of 14.45. Torpedoes are stern. To a range of 15.9 kilometers. So that, you yeah, know, that's a... 1.5 kilometer base difference, and then another 20% of that on top of, you know, how far you're going to be able to get shells out when you have your spotter plane in the air. And that is a much more comfortable distance from from whence to fire. So you can see that uh, even with the spotter plane in the air, my firing range is only 17.3 kilometers. That is, uh, that's not too hot. But, 
once I get the guns upgraded, then my guns with the spotter plane in the air will reach out about 19 kilometers. And that's a pretty comfortable distance. And really, uh, with, the, with the speed on these rounds, the velocity on these rounds, they, you get much beyond that and your chances of landing the shells get, get pretty low. I mean, they've got a, a base velocity of uh, 841 meters per second, a little bit better than the Albemarle, but um, I think. I think it's a little bit better than the Albemarle. But not, not by much. The difference is pretty slight. Now this Jutland is just far enough behind that island that I can't get him. You can see secondaries firing, but I can't get the guns over that island. But there's going to be a whole big bunch of ships on this, so I'm going to turn around that are going to be just on the other side of that island. You can see the Izumo, Jutland, Bismarck, or the enemy Kleber takes out. Takes out our Fletcher, our Palmer takes out their Friesland, and their Iowa takes out our Wooster. Iowa's making a rush to jump across that gap. And here's what I was talking about. There's going to be a lot of ships kind of crossing right here. I'm going to see if I can finish this jetlink. Avoid some shots from the Iowa. I managed to drag down the Jutland, so that's kill number two. And let's see if I can get some torpedoes in this gap, see if I can catch anybody now. Just have to work the guns. Now on our other flank, the Kleber is just giving them fits. Venezia, Palmer, and Amagi. And that's that bunch of ships that I was talking about. Pretty much uh, anywhere I fire, I'm going to hit something. I'm just deciding on a target. Iowa looks like he's in the worst shape. So I'm going to put shells on him first, see if I can't get him burning. There's a fire. Now, I, I haven't, I mean, I've only done 35,000 damage. We're uh, over 12 minutes into the game. But this is, uh, this is a time in the game when I think this ship is you know, this line can really shine. Uh, I've done my part with helping with destroyers. Our battleships are keeping their battleships busy. I was really hoping I'd get that get that kill with the fire. Oh well. That Azumo, he's occupied elsewhere. He's trying to help with Venencia, Palmer, and Amagi up there. He's just helping to finish them off. They're making a push for the cap. They see that they're down on ships. They're down six, we're only down four. So they're making a push for the cap. Can't blame them. That's fire number four. But I'm gonna need to get a little bit closer and do what I can to stop that. Now I need to stay reasonably well angled. And you can see I moved a little bit farther north to make it a little tougher for the Izumo to put guns on me, but our Palmer just completely rid me of that worry. The Kleber takes care of our Venezia. Bad guys are down to five ships. We are now down to seven ships. Trying to get a fire going on the Bismarck. Somebody smashed him pretty hard. Let's see if I can finish him off over this island. And although I didn't really do any damage, I do manage to finish off the Bismarck. So that's kill number three. So, uh, like the Albemarle, this is a ship that is kind of forced to stay somewhat close to the action. So you have to make good use of cover, and you have to keep a really close eye on your angle to ships that can shoot at you. Now I'm going to catch the Amagi with some torps. It's pretty hard to care about that anymore. If you were not aware, at one time in this game, if you hit a friendly, that was considered a bad thing. But um, these days, it, it doesn't really matter. You'd have to just daka 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 at one of your friendly ships pretty much the entire game for there to be any repercussions. 
I've asked Arkigiro if you would mind going to spot the Clavert because I'm expecting that the Clavert is going to make a push for the cap. And uh, with the speed that he has, he can just rush down our battleships. But you can see Arkigiro is continuing to head south. We don't have anybody near their cap. And I'm not really in a position to be able to turn around and head north. So I think I'm just going to continue the direction I'm going. Even with a spotter plane, I can't really reach Pomeran, and it's gone dark now anyway. I think our Pomeran's in big trouble. I do manage to burn down the Napoli. That's kill number four. And you can see Kleber is now in our cap. And I'm expecting, again, I'm expecting him to rush down our Pomeran. Pomeran's kind of out there by himself. Their Pomeran is occupied with our Amagi. You can see the Kleber now. Aramagi finishes off the Pomeran, thank goodness. Team has taken the lead. And Kleber finishes off our Pomeran, and he is now in our cap and will soon be invisible. So you, <laughs> you can see that uh, our Kagero has finally turned around and is heading north. I'm going to have to count on our Kagero and our Amagi to keep him from capping us out. I might be able to get off a shot here. Well, he's still visible. Really hoping, but that ship moves so well. He's just accelerating. He's just going to move right out from underneath those shells. And the enemy Yoshino takes down our Amagi, and this is it's a much closer game. That Kleber doesn't have much in the way of HP, but he's already, what, an eighth of the way toward capping us out. No, of Alabama has no chance of getting there in time. So it's really going to kind of rest on the shoulders of the Kagero. Kagero doesn't have much in the way of HP either. So I'm going to push forward here. I'm going to see if I can't get into their cap, give them something else to think about. If I'm in their cap and I'm not visible, which is possible because there's an island uh, on the east side of their cap, and I can use this cover. So if I'm in their cap and I'm invisible, they can't reset me. And if our Kagero or Alabama or both are able to reset the Kleber, maybe we win by capping them out. I can see I've got the De Grossa is kind of right behind me. Kagero's almost in our cap. And this is looking pretty good for our team. Kagero's going to have Alabama backing him up if Kleber gets seen. He will probably get sunk. The real threat is whether or not Clever will get torpedoes on either of our friendlies up there. Now, what I was talking about earlier as far as, uh, you know, maneuvering and trying to stay angled to red ships. You can see I've got almost 1.1 million potential damage. And I've still got the vast majority of my HP. Kagero does spot Kleber. Alabama is, I'm sure, pointing that way. Kagero is pointing that way. And I'm just going to keep pushing forward using this island. Kagero does take out the Kleber with his guns. Yoshino can't see me, and it doesn't have any chance of seeing me. So I can sit right here behind this island as long as he is detected. And as long as he keeps firing, De Gross is going to keep it spotted for me. You can see I've just slammed on the brakes here. Now, he's probably realizing at this point that he has no chance of winning if he doesn't sink me, De Grossa, or both. I mean, it's four to one. And I can see already that he's going to try and head back toward this cap. So I'm going to throw some torpedoes out. Just to the north of this little island that I'm here behind. And if he does head, ba head back this way, if the torpedoes don't catch him, they will either force him to turn in or turn out. Either way, keeping him easy to target. Only got 45 seconds to go. And I, at this point, we have this one no matter what. And I'm thinking, I wonder if I can secure Kraken here. That'd be a really cool thing in one of my first games playing this ship. If I can manage Kraken. 
chip damage on the Yoshino, and I've got to be careful. Yoshino's got guns that hit very hard, but this is it right here. This, there's no way he survives this. Hope you enjoyed this. Really appreciate you spending some time with me. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.